welcome to Studio 5. We've got lots to share this week. A preview of the film Sound of Freedom. New music from Doe and Letitia Wright has a new film where she is both the star and the producer. We begin with Sound of Freedom, the real life hero story of a former government agent, Tim Ballard. The film stars Jim Caviezel as Ballard on a mission to save two siblings from sex trafficking. One rescue comes quickly, the other takes time and potentially a deadly journey. We intentionally go to the darkest corners of the earth where there is no hope and find these kids. Cameras capture some of Tim Ballard's real life missions to rescue children from sex trafficking. And now there's an even bigger light shining in the darkness. It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Because you can sell a bag of cocaine one time with a child five to ten times a day. God's children are not for sale. The Sound of Freedom, starring Jim Caviezel. Te lo prometo. Jim Caviezel portrays you in the film. Your thoughts seeing him on screen as you for the first time? Well, for first, it's, 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 it's really bizarre, first of all, to watch it. But Jim is a special case because um, I never thought this movie was going to be made because from concept to screen, I think I read 5% make it to the big screen. Mm -hmm. I, a few years into their endeavor, I remember they showed up in... I believe it was December of 2017, and they said, hey, we're going to film this summer, and you, we need to pick someone to play you, which I never let my mind go to that place, because mm -hmm. that's a strange question. Right out of the gate, I knew who I wanted. So I want, well, if this is a real question, the answer is Jim Caviezel. And I was so adamant, and I said to them, look at, I don't like Hollywood, I don't trust Hollywood, I don't know these actors, I know Jim Caviezel loves Jesus, mm -hmm. and, and that's the only real requirement I have. It, it was like four days. They asked him, they skipped his agents right, right to him, and he, he had had a really personal experience himself with human trafficking, and I, we didn't know about it, and he jumped right in, and you know, he's one of my best friends today. You know, we're, we're, wow. we're super close and talking all the time, because he cares deeply. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years now. <laughs> How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? Take me back, I guess, to that period of your life. What was going through your heart as this is all unfolding? There was a strange time uh, during that really decade of working in the government because we were discovering things, and sometimes I felt I was discovering things alone mm. um, because nobody was talking about human trafficking and I would tell people these stories of the things I was coming across and no one believed me, you know, and, mm. and um, <clears throat> the most frustrating part for me was, you know, in the U.S. government early 2000s, we were focused on the end user stuff. Yeah. The, the child exploitation material hitting someone's computer, but you, you keep asking the question, where are the kids? Where are the kids? Where are the kids? Jim Caviezel says a line in the movie that so represents how I felt where it, when it's like, you know, this job tears you to pieces and I need a chance to put those pieces back together. This job tears you to pieces. And this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. When God tells you what to do, you cannot hesitate. And really it was, it was uh, my wife who, because I could have been convinced that my own family was more important than someone else's, mm -hmm. which is not true. Mm -hmm. But I could have been convinced that I, I can't afford to quit my job. And ultimately it came down to, the, to a, a conversation I had with my wife. On this, in the second week of December of 2013, I was, I was being, even though I'd had many very, very powerful, very powerful spiritual experiences, both of us, that we had to do this, we had to quit, we had to pursue this, these operations. And I was so scared because I just come across these stats, you know, mm -hmm. and one of them was 5% of nonprofits don't make it through the first year. Less than 3% make it through the second year. Mm -hmm. And you compare that to a federal job, which is secure for your life. Yeah. And I was freaking out and, and my wife had to remind me and she did it in a very powerful way and she grabbed me by the collars and she said, 
I will not let you jeopardize my salvation, she said, by not doing this. And it was just like... For Homeland Security, you know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. Which means she'll disappear for good. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What we do? You quit your job, and you go and rescue those kids. When she said that, I, that's when I really put it into perspective. You're right. We're, why are we here on this earth? Like, we're not here just to have fun or just live a, a life of ease and luxury or something like and she she followed up that that little warning statement with and if we end up living in tents because we have to sell our house i don't care mm. because i'm more worried about my meeting with my maker and so that was my wife's you know lesson to me and i was like you're right you're right you're right so i leaned on her until i figured out my own faith and and then we jumped in hey <laughs> Since leaving his Homeland Security job, Ballard's Operation Underground Railroad organization has rescued at least 6,000 children from modern-day slavery. He and his wife have even adopted two of them, growing their family of seven to a family of nine. God prospered us in the end, and, and uh, as dark as the world got, I recognize for the first time being outside the government that there's a lot of light too that comes. Ballard continues his rescue missions today. He is the founder and CEO of Operation Underground Railroad, which has teams working together to end this modern day slavery. The Sound of Freedom is in theaters on the 4th of July. Still ahead. It's generous. It's who you are. It's always a matter. New sounds from Doe and the surprising job she worked on the road to a solo career. She's sharing that story in our conversation next. Welcome back to Studio 5. June is dubbed Black Music Month. So we're taking the time to highlight some Studio 5 conversations with musical guests and samples of their latest music. Rounding out the month for us is Doe, whose latest single is titled Lead Us Again. Doe's journey to musical success is quite sweet and even includes a stint, get this, as an Uber driver. It's a story she shares right here in our conversation. Holy Spirit, lead us again. We don't want to stay where we have been. Holy Spirit. Music seems to have always been a part of your life. Was there ever a thought of doing anything else? Oh, there's always a thought of doing <laughs> You know what's funny? Anytime I get like a week off, I'm like, I'm gonna go be in real estate. Are you so serious? I start, I can't tell you how many times I start looking for odd jobs on Indeed. <laughs> if I have too much time on my hands. I know, right? It's like this thing of like, what else can I get my hands into? Wow. You know, and I still want to be in real estate, but I, I don't know. I, I could teach high school. I could teach like the the arts class, like the musical arts class. And I just like making kids do things they never thought they could do, and showing them their potential. Like that's fun for me. Um, so yeah, I just. I, ha I mean, I have three college degrees, so I could go get like, that was the thing. When I moved to Dallas, I was like, I'm not gonna use this to go get a nine to five because I will never ask for permission to leave town again. Mm. So I got my Uber license and I, yes. <laughs> was Doe driving Uber? <laughs> I was, and I was doing a good job too. I was doing a real good job. And I met lots of people and there was this couple, I told one, there was one time when I told this couple, yeah, I, I sing. and. And I told them I sang on Cycles with Jonathan McReynolds and they got really awkward and I was like, oh, they think I'm making all of this up. Mm -hmm. And um, years later, there's a DM that I got on Instagram and I'm like, you remember us? You dropped us off at our, for our honeymoon and you know, we love your music. And they weren't mean or anything, mm -hmm. but I was like, I probably look really ridiculous right now. My hair was in like pigtails on top of my head. And I'm driving them around Uber and telling them like, yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the industry. And so, wow. But yeah, there's lots to do. I'm I'm a person that could do anything except be at a desk 
staring at the wall <laughs> for hours. Some people can do that. I, I can't. Yeah. Don't do that to me. Yeah. <laughs> How important is it for people who feel called to things like music and so forth to serve, you think, in their church yeah. before? Yeah. I think there needs to be something that we're all doing and giving to that we don't get anything back for. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We all need that outlet in our life because it keeps us out of this mentality of uh, I'm, I'm only here on this earth for the check. Being in a place to where you're giving and you're serving and you're touching people and no one's giving you a check for it um, keeps you in this headspace of it is all about people. It's all about God's people. If you could go back in time and talk to Little Doe, what would you tell her? It's going to be all right. <laughs> You're going to be all right. I was really different. I was really different. And so I felt rejection at times and experienced a lot of that. And um, I think that it's shaped me to this person who wants to make people feel seen. I never want anyone to ever feel like because they're quirky and a little bit weird that they, that they don't matter and that they need to go sit in the corner where all the cool people do whatever. Um, because I'm, I'm that person and I always will be that person. So. I just would tell her, like, you, you're going to be all right. Now, beyond the music, Doe has shared some other big life news. She's engaged. Her fiancé is fellow singer and songwriter and music producer Orlando Palmer, who is known as I Am Son. Well, with that, we have made it to this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. It's the perfect time to share a story in pictures. With joyful gospel music from his Hampton Roads, Virginia choir, music man Pharrell Williams debuted his first line as the new creative designer of Louis Vuitton's men's collection. With celebrity models and a celebrity-filled audience, Pharrell unveiled his vision for Louis Vuitton on Paris's oldest bridge. The presentation made mention of scripture and showcased joy-inspired designs. And these few images are this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Just moments away. Lord, help me reach my piece of the promised land. Protect me on this journey. Black Panther's Letitia Wright's new project as an actress and producer. Surrounded is a journey that follows Mo Washington, a young woman from Missouri. And she is an ex-slave, but she was able to um, gain experience within the Buffalo Soldier regime, be a soldier for two years. And now that that's over, she's now on a journey to, to take a gold claim that will predominantly give her a piece of land to start a new life. The full story is next. Welcome back to Studio 5. Set in the 1870s New Mexico, Surrounded is a Western thriller. In this story, a former enslaved woman disguises herself as a man to lay claim to a gold mine. Black Panther's Letitia Wright stars in the film and she serves as the producer as well. It is also one of the last films where we get to see the work of actor Michael K. Williams, who died in 2021. Lord, help me reach my piece of the promised land. Protect me on this journey. Marauders. Join us. We're all equals here. Nobody make sudden move. Get on down. Hurry up. Drop the Stop the way. Way. Some of the themes that drew me into the movie uh, was firstly the fact that I'm playing a, a, a really soulful human being. Surrounded is a journey that follows Mo Washington, a young woman from Missouri, and she is an ex-slave, but she was able to um, gain experience within the Buffalo Soldier regime and be a soldier for two years. And now that that's over, she's now on a journey to, to take a gold claim that will predominantly give her a piece of land to start a new life. I got him. This is what we're gonna do. 
I want to get the sheriff and bring him here. Mo is really inspired by the, the story of Cathay Williams. And Cathay Williams was an African-American woman who went into the, the Buffalo Soldiers um, regime and kind of hid there for about two years um, for, for the sake of survival. Um, and Mo is really inspired by her world, um, her story. You saying guard? This bean pole guard him? Like Tommy Walsh. Letitia's the right actress to play this part because she has this um, inner nobility about her. She's very noble and she's very strong as a, a, as a person, um, but also just in terms of being on set with her as, as, as an actress as well. Uh, and seeing what she's doing with this and bringing that sense of um, dignity to her character. You know, those white folk ain't coming back. Just because they don't want to look at you don't mean I can't see. You'll always be a slave to the white man. What'd you call me? You said you'll always be a slave. Have you been on this side? Keep your mouth shut. They'd rather hang me for the color of my skin than to hang you for what you did. You ain't never going to hang white folk. You know, Letitia is, is um, I thought was a, a, a great cast for the for the role of Mo. She just she has this sense where she she just is. And I, I again I find beauty in that. Yeah, I gotta work three times. It's hard to get one fifth of what I deserve. After the war, I made a promise that I'll fight for those that can't fight for themselves. It looks like we believe in the same thing. And I have to just go about it a different way. I'm wearing two hats. I'm acting and I'm also producing. And the acting part of course is something that I've been trained in for many years and I'm still training. But in terms of producing, I'm, I'm now starting off my journey. But the way I chose to produce on this was to focus on the creative side of it. It's been a fun journey, it hasn't been too hard. I've been able, they've given me the freedom to work mostly on my acting and focus on that. But when I need to step in, I try to step in. Let's go about it together. My body is I didn't get a piece of my promised land. Didn't get the river slowing with milk and honey. You have to take what you deserve. She has that uh, that spirit, that fire in her, um, and I'm really, I'm really, really eager to see where her career goes, and not just in Hollywood, but what she's gonna bring. Follow you or die. Yeah. Baby girl, you in dangerous water. Tommy Walsh and the colored girl. What's my name? Small Washington. Surrounded is rated R for its violence and language. It's available to watch right now on multiple platforms. Welcome back to Studio 5. Music fuels this production every single week, and this week it is the great Dolly Parton who's providing the soundtrack. Take a listen, and you'll hear why World on Fire is what's playing in my ear. World on Fire, that was a sample of Dolly Parton's performance at the Academy of Country Music Awards. On that musical note, we are just about out of time for this week's edition of Studio 5. So I want to take a moment to look ahead to next week. We'll travel to Zambia, where Arizona Cardinal offensive tackle Kelvin Beecham is at work off the field with World Vision helping to deliver clean drinking water wells to areas in desperate need. Clean water is foundational. Um, you know, it, it sets the stage for everything. We'll have that story and so much more to share with you come next week. This week, we still have time for one more thing. We want to give that to the man whose life work is now the subject of a major motion picture. Here's Tim Ballard. You watch the film and see your life is on the line and risk at several points and I'm sure there are many we didn't see. Were you afraid? Yes. You seem so... Yeah, so it's, it's an interesting question. Um, I'm, af I'm, I'm afraid before, 
and I'm afraid after. Every time, you know, before before we're going in, and and there's been many times, you know, we were we we were in Ukraine last year rescuing children while bombs were going around. And before I'm going in, I'm thinking, what am I doing? This is crazy. And afterwards, if I watch the footage, you know, I can't watch the sound of freedom. I, I watched it a few times, I can't watch it. I, I, I'll come in later if they want me to say something because I'm sweating and I'm crying and I'm the whole time because it brings up so many things and questions. What were you thinking? Why did you do this? But I'll tell you this, and, and I can only credit this to God and angels, in the moments, when in the action, in the part, I'm, I'm calm. I'm calm, I, I see clearly. I, and it's because there's something greater than me that's, that's, that's distracting things, I feel that. Um, but God lets you know that it was Him by making, making sure you can be plenty scared before and plenty scared after. <laughs> and somehow we just keep going back in because we know that, uh, like Jim says, God's children are not for sale. And there's one scripture in the Bible that I think of constantly when I go into these operations. It's interesting to consider, you know, there's one time maybe, and I'm not talking about flipping tables in the temple, there's one time where Jesus gets mafioso. His words are like the mafia, but it's him, so it's righteous and it's right. And that's when he says, and it's the only time, it's better that a millstone be hung around your neck and you be cast to the bottom of the sea than that you should hurt one of these children. Something Jim Alex, Jim says in the film, which I think, I actually don't think that's part of the script, I think he ad libbed that in it. And so I think, okay, that's a mafia move. That's like, you, you're, you're better there than, than if, then what's going to happen to you if you hurt a child this way? And so I think he, I know this much. I know where he stands on this. And if he stands on this to that level, then I can, I can go into the action. He will back me. He will, he will protect us. And, and without that faith, I would never, ever have the courage to even think about doing some of these things. <laughs> Tim Ballard, thank you. That's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you, and then please, come on back. See what Studio 5 takes you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.